Hey St. Louis, ever find yourself wandering down on the loop and thinking, where the heck did Del Mar get its name? Probably not, but I'm going to pretend like you did and tell you all about this historic street. We all know that the loop is an awesome place to go to do a ton of fun stuff. But what was this place like a hundred years ago before King Joe Edwards? Turns out, not too different from what we have today. We'll look at the history of this area and more on Word on the Street, Del Mar. The Del Mar Loop is one of St. Louis's most iconic sections of street, lying smack dab in one of the city's oldest suburbs, University City. After the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, this land was made up of mostly humble farming communities miles away from the hustle and bustle of the big city. And the road that would become Del Mar Boulevard was known back in the day as Olive Street Plank Road in the rural section to the west and Morgan Street within the St. Louis city limits to the east. It garnered that name from General Daniel Morgan, a hero from the American Revolutionary War, who led a famous group of snipers nicknamed Morgan's Sharpshooters. The legend states that while recruiting riflemen for his outfit, he made up targets with portraits of British officers and only accepted men who could hit the target on their first shot from 100 yards. As westward expansion continued in the second half of the 1800s, two landowners on either side of the Olive Street Plank Road wanted to freshen up the place by renaming the road after their East Coast home states. The only problem was one person was from Delaware and the other person was from Maryland. In the end, they both compromised by combining the first three letters from each state and Delmar Boulevard was born, with the Morgan Street section following suit in 1933. By 1901, Delmar developed into a fine destination for novel entertainment, and the trolley would pick you up in the city, take you right to the action, then loop back around to pick up more eager patrons, giving the Delmar Loop its famous nickname. There was a public swimming pool, a roller rink, restaurants and pubs, an entire amusement park complete with games, rides, the locally famous Del Mar Gardens to stroll through. The neighboring Del Mar Racetrack was a popular destination from 1901 to 05 that offered a place for horse betting, bullfighting, and auto racing. Its inaugural race on July 1st, 1901 cost just a dollar to get into, and at its peak in 1904, the track gave out $194,000 in winnings about five and a half million in today's dollars. The track closed the following year in 1905, but it still has an imprint on modern day University City. The streets Eastgate and Westgate extending north of Del Mar both roughly mark the boundaries of the racetrack. With talk of the big 1904 World's Fair becoming louder and more exciting, women's suffrage activist Edward Gardner Lewis purchased 85 acres just to the northwest of the fairgrounds in Forest Park. The area would serve as a nearby side attraction to the main attraction during the Great St. Louis Exhibition. Edward even paid for hundreds of tents to be put up in his own backyard for visitors of the fair to stay in, in what would become known as Camp Lewis. And the camp included all the amenities anybody would ever ask for. He was able to afford all this because he was the publisher of such magazines as the Women's Magazine and the Women's Farm Journal. This newly acquired land would be the headquarters of the Lewis Publishing Company, which he had constructed in 1903. The Women's Magazine building was his main headquarters until his financial collapse in 1915 due to mail fraud and other legal matters. The building stood vacant until it was dedicated as University City's City Hall on November 1, 1930, which it continues to be to this day. The building stands tall as a monument to the historic genesis of this area. In his heyday, Edward was passionate about making this area a high-class residential district. In 1906, he led the charge to incorporate this land as University City, and he decided that lions should guard this beautiful new city. Edward commissioned the Hungarian artist George Julian Zolnay to create the iconic lion and lioness that would perch proudly atop the gates of opportunity, standing guard for University City. Zolnay was known around town for his World's Fair exhibits, his Pierre Leclede statue outside of St. Louis City Hall, and the Confederate Memorial in Forest Park. When the Lions were completed in 1909, the 40-foot tall Pillars of Pride were the tallest structures in the area and could be seen for miles. Today, replicas made from fiberglass casts stand in place of the deteriorating concrete originals, but Zolnay's vision and impact remain strong on the loop, 
as the lion and lioness continue to look out over the region. And the region continued to grow. Beautiful homes and new businesses began popping up all over the newly incorporated University City. By 1920, the area became a booming commercial district and continued to grow in population and size throughout the 20th century, maintaining its reputation for being a great place to hang out throughout history. Today, just as it always has been, the Del Mar Loop continues to be a fantastic getaway with countless venues for escaping the mundanity of everyday life. And it can be argued that it's better now than it's ever been. A true melting pot of beautiful people and cultures coming together to experience something new and exciting. Whether it's eating some good food, getting some good drinks with friends, seeing some rock and live music or an exotic film, doing some shopping, or just taking a walk in a beautiful area with Missouri stars right under your feet. This place has got it all, and a trolley to take you there. And that's the word on the street. I'm walking and talking about you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This channel's brand spanking new and I'm growing it up from scratch. So if you guys could like the videos, share the videos, and if you like it, comment and tell me what other streets you'd like to see and let's get this thing rolling. Until next time, we'll see you later.